The transition from analog to digital also comes with the transition of having less to organize to having more to organize. And that's simply because it's so much easier to just download things, even accidentally, things we see on the internet and in online spaces. And a lot of what we download from the internet is instant. When we buy something digital, we get instant access to it. But this also opens us up to having hundreds, maybe even thousands of files sitting on our desktops or stored in random folders like documents or downloads. And given that my goal is to help you make both a fun and easy switch to digital and because I run a digital shop, I wanted to share some best practices for managing and organizing your files. And personally, how I manage all of my own digital stickers. So let me walk you through four simple steps. I'll also have a free checklist linked in the description so you can make sure you're working through all of the steps and I'll also have timestamps for you if you need to skip around. First, you basically need to take inventory and declutter. This will be the most time consuming, bang your head on the table type of work, but it's super important for getting a fresh start in file management. Go through every folder, documents and downloads are two very big ones to check, your desktop, log into your cloud storage sites like Dropbox, Google Drive. If you're on your iPad, check the files app and the downloads folder under files as well. Click on the file, see what it is. If you don't want it or need it for later, move it to the trash bin and then clear the trash. Again, if you've never done this before, it might take you quite some time, days even. And it's a good idea to implement this step into your weekly routines. Set aside time each week and make it part of your reset or cleaning routines to go through and organize your digital files. Because together, we're only going to accumulate more over time. What you don't trash, rename it if it's not clear what it is by the current name of the file. And when it comes to video clips, I like to use keywords I might search for when looking for it later. When it comes to sticker sets, they're usually a bit more versatile, so normally I'll call it by what set it is and then number it. So for instance, for my travel widgets, there are 51 widgets, each in several different colors. So I'll rename the widgets to say something like travel blue one, travel blue two, travel blue three, and so on. Second, decide on a file management solution. There are a number of websites, some of which you're probably already making use of, Google Drive, Dropbox, iCloud, and so on. You can also purchase secondary hard drives that you plug into your computers or your iPads to manage files. This will all come down to personal preference and how much storage the you now needs and the you in the future will require, but, I sh but I'll share what I'm personally doing to give you some ideas. Google Drive stores all of the files I normally share or collaborate with others on. It also stores archives of all the files I'm not necessarily using or will need in the immediate future, but might be nice to refer to later. I'm still rocking the free version of Google Drive, which gives you 15 gigabytes of storage, but I do have three Gmail accounts, one personal and two business accounts. So technically I have 45 gigabytes through Google Drive. The same premise applies to all of them. They hold files that I share with others online or collaborate with others online with. So my personal Google Drive holds things like presentations, group papers, and the like, as well as an archive of some of my work from my college days. And my business Gmail accounts are similar to that, except obviously collaborative and archived business work. Then I have an iCloud account. I believe you get five free gigabytes of storage through iCloud, but I actually pay for additional storage each month, so I have two terabytes on iCloud iCloud is where I store virtually everything else, all of my stickers, business files and documents, personal pictures, it's the entire works over on iCloud. And my main reason being that iCloud is just so seamless across my MacBook, my iMac, my phone, my iPad, in a way that's not as seamless as other cloud-based storage options since iCloud is integrated directly into these devices. And the last storage management solution I use is hard drives, and that's strictly for film work. I transfer all of my videos, music, audio, and editing projects onto, onto these external hard drives because these files are just so robust and it makes sense to have five, 10 terabyte hard drives that holds thousands of hours of footage. So on to the third step, that's to create a hierarchy that's going to make the most sense to you. I'm a fan of the folder within a folder technique, and I think that makes most 
sense for near 100% of cases when it comes to organizing files. So for me, this might look something like this. How you create this hierarchy, again, will be personal preference, but remember that with the systems you are using, you can also sort them by date added, date edited, the type of content it is, etc. So I recommend going with something even more specific to you that your system cannot already do. So instead of manually sorting things by date, i.e. naming folders by the date, you can give it a keyword. That is merely a suggestion just because your systems can already organize things by date and type. The very last step is a purely drag and drop, rearrange, reorganize situation. Now that you've determined where and how you'll organize your files, it's simply getting those files into the right places. Make sure you set aside time again to do this weekly. I did want to cover a more niche topic on the topic of file arrangement as it pertains to digital planning and that is digital stickers or clip art. I commonly get asked how I organize my digital stickers and I wanna share even more of the specifics of that since you might already have a system in place for other types of files you have. So GoodNotes recently introduced elements, so you might feel torn on whether to add hundreds, maybe even thousands of stickers to elements or to keep things separate as you've always had. And here is my solution. I've added my most used stickers as collections and elements. I cannot tell you what the limit for elements is because I don't know it. I haven't reached a limit or run into any problems yet, but my most used stickers go into elements. So I'm not pulling up additional windows to get stickers I know I'm going to use daily or just super often. All of my other stickers are organized into two places because I cannot stress the importance of backing up digital files enough. As a digital seller, I'll be honest, I only use the stickers I create because I have a system for creating them that makes it easier for me to organize them later. Every digital sticker set from K Digital Studio comes in a pre-cropped sticker sheet for GoodNotes. So if you import a sheet into GoodNotes, you can individually lasso the stickers to copy, paste, and add them to your digital planners. They also come as a zipped folder of the individual sticker files or PNGs. So if you don't use GoodNotes and you have these, you can use them instead. I import the GoodNotes sticker sheets in GoodNotes in a folder I created called Stickers. And then the sheets are named with the brand, K Digital Studio, and then what set it belongs to. The individual PNGs are named similarly. Sometimes I describe what the individual sticker is or use the numbered system for organization, just depending on the amount of stickers there are. And I keep those stored in a stickers folder on my iCloud drive. Thus, I can access either my most used stickers from Elements or I can access any other stickers from either the pre-cropped sticker sheets within GoodNotes or I can split screen and just drag and drop the individual PNGs from my iCloud account. <clears throat> Again, I'm using iCloud here because it's so seamless. Downloading via Safari on the iPad and iPhone is way less cumbersome and you run into far less issues than you would if you were using the Google Chrome app. Downloads from Safari also go straight into the Files app right next to my iCloud drive so I can easily manage my organized files and files I've just downloaded and haven't had a chance to organize yet. It makes it easier to organize later as well since what I download from Safari is under the exact same app where I can access my iCloud storage as well. If you have multiple sticker sets from multiple shops, a good hierarchy might be the shop names and then subfolders of the specific sets in GoodNotes if they offer pre-cropped sticker sheets and then that same hierarchy of folders and the cloud-based storage app of your choice. So that's all the steps I take to ensure that my desktop is cleared, my downloads folder is empty by the end of the week, and that my files are named and organized in places I'm expecting them to be for when I'm working and need to access them later. I cannot stress how important it is for your computer one and your mental health and sanity two to get the upper hand on file management. I hope you found this video helpful. I'd love to hear how you're organizing your files. Maybe you're already organized or have some sort of system in place. Let me know down in the comments. I love the idea of the comment section being another resource for how files can be managed and the hierarchy that makes most sense to you might be perfect for someone else too. 
Subscribe too if you haven't yet, it helps way more than you know, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!